we're clear about why we come to church and if we're clear about why we can call ourselves Christians, I have friends listening this morning who are not Christians. Some of them are from different walks of life and from different backgrounds. So I want to just say this one thing before I get into my message because it is the thing that absolutely drives me crazy. Don't come to church. I'm probably the only pastor alive, not just in America, probably anywhere in the world to say don't come to church on Christmas if that's your one day a year which you think means something to God. I got to tell you something, it means nothing. Let me take this down to a secular point and then I, I'll move on to the message because this is actually not my message. But the secular point is, let's take uh, my brother over here. Would you want to be with somebody, in a relationship with somebody who only came to you when they knew that you would supply their wants or their needs, but no other time, no other time, say only 365 days in a year, this person might come to you two or three times a year to ask of you directly to give, to participate, to do something. What would your attitude be towards this person? Don't say it. <laughs> I know you too well. I saw, the, I, saw the, I saw the wheels going and I thought, oh no, <laughs> stop this one. But it would be offensive. Would you be offended? Yes. Would you be offended if I supposedly, now let me pick somebody else who I got here, we're sitting together. Okay, a real example. You don't want to see him at all. You never want to see him, except when he's in a really good mood. Because when he's in a good mood, he might do something for you. Is that a relationship? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think the Q&A part of this message is over. <laughs> My point is, if you take your behavior towards your parents, children, kids, towards your parents, you, you only come to them. That may be a, the best example. You only come to them when you have a need, and that need maybe is not that often, but you come, there's no other reason that you ever come to them. That's how I put in the same camp people who come once a year thinking they've done something for God with gracing us with their presence. You may think I'm mean, but I'm telling you something. Marginal Christianity is like taking a large amount of drugs and not knowing what's going to happen to you. Just enough to be dangerous because in your mind you think you're okay, but not enough commitment to actually be okay. And that's where I say I, I, I leave, I, I back out of this grac graciously to say when people talk about their understanding of God, it smoked out real quick in how they think they can treat God. Now God is either real to you, alive, we serve a living God, or it's just some figment, some uh, mythical thing that you just go along with because like everything else, like Father Christmas, just go along with it, it's a good thing, makes you feel good. If that's your decision, now I am responsible. When people come through this door, if you listen to me, my responsibility is to rightly divide this word to make sure that I'm bringing spiritual food to the table and to make sure that I educate you in spiritual things, to not be ignorant that no, it's not okay to treat God as though one day, one day a year, maybe two times a year, you grace him with your presence in church. Why? Because the church is a people who belong to the Lord. The person who's coming here one day a year, you will say, well, he's this, he or she still belongs to the Lord, but in what capacity? That's like saying a husband and a wife. Well, I'm only a wife to my husband one day a year. Try that. Try it and see if it works or do the reverse. It doesn't work. And when people start thinking properly about why the church exists and why we do what we do, that mindset of coming because it's the thing you're, you think, the universal sense of oughtness that you ought to do is probably misguided and misplaced. And I'll be maybe the only person I don't like to use this verbiage, but maybe I'm the only person to say, I think it offends God. It doesn't please him. See, we think when we bring our little whatever it is to God, he's jumping on and go, oh, good, yay. Just like the way we now have to train our children. There's no negative. It's all the positive. Even when your kid, you know, messes up, oh, you're so good, Johnny. So we want God to do the same thing for us. I'm sorry, but this book does not speak of God 
uh, patting us on the back for showing up. Many people showed up in Christ's day, but not too many were willing actually to follow Christ. And that following is why we call ourselves Christians. So I'll get to it. I'm, I'm sure I'll break away to do, believe it or not, I may actually do a Christmas message, but it won't be what the mass multitudes would like it to be. Sorry, folks, I'm not here to please you. I'm here to please him. So, now, with that being said, and yeah, I, listen, I'm going to just say it. I've heard people say, you know, you could be a little bit nicer. You could speak a little kinder. No, I, the way I am, the way I am is the way I am. I speak it. And when I say I speak it, I believe I'm speaking the truth in love. And love is not this mushy, backslapping syrup. Sometimes it's tough love to say, wake up. It is your soul that is in question, not how many numbers we fit in the building or how many people we think we've saved. This is a personal battle between you and your maker. You're either on team Jesus or you're in the world. There's nothing in between. So don't fool yourself and don't let other people deceive you on that subject. You've been watching me, Pastor Melissa Scott, live from Glendale, California at Faith Center. If you would like to attend the service with us Sunday morning at 11 a.m., simply call one 800-338-3030 to receive your pass. If you'd like more teaching and you'd like to go straight to our website, the address is www.pastormelissascott.com.